<laughs> Perfect. Welcome, everybody, to Accessing Christ Consciousness. We're going to be going over an introduction to the Christ Consciousness Blueprint. And um, yeah, let's get started. Thank you all for being here today. All right, so truth is our identity. The ascension process is self-mastery and is the reason for conscious projection into the third density. This experience is to refine and qualify aware consciousness to reach evolutionary wisdom. Your truth is universal in the sense that what we are and where we come from is the same to what God is. And truth is in who you are which is in everyone. Um, Self-mastery is also the, the main reason why there's been like the smallest fraction of the human race that's been incarnated, that's been able to reach true enlightenment. I think spirit said that it was like one fourth of a one fourth fraction because um, it is a narrow path and the path is inward. And if you master yourself, the, the, then that is ascension because ultimately all that there is, is the self. Um, and then I'm gonna go over who I am and my mission so you guys are familiar with what I do. Um, I am a grid activator. So we just go through and use um, Christ consciousness codes and things of that nature to go in the grids and activate them to a higher frequency, um, moving my uh, distorted miasms and reversal matrix systems throughout the throughout our experience. I'm an Emerald Guardian, which is um, being tasked with the multidimensional awareness that we influence their reality. So once you come under the awareness and of your entire being, um, you're able to, given rights, given rights like um, the, the city powers, like uh, teleportation and um, instant mm -hmm. manifestation, things like that. So I'm not there yet. However, that is the end goal. Um, a medium and channel, an or clearing specialist, uh, initiative Christ consciousness, and uh, a deep connection to the ancient of days. Um, my mission is to elevate the collective in reaching higher states of consciousness through practical expansion, self-exploration, mastery and activation. And I'm here to hold space and be a channel for all to come into full realization of the Christos within and how to use this connection to transform our reality into a divine expression of creation. I've studied creation and universal properties for the past four years an affiliate and teacher for the awakening within, founder of Rise, Shine the Light Network, and Ascend Appalachia, uh, certification in or clearings through the awakening within, uh, mediumship and channeling through a practice modality group, a member of the healing group, which is 13 Pillars of Heaven, and my teachings come from Christ, the Order of Melchizedek and Enoch, the Emerald Order, the Ancient Zodiac Lessons of Creation, my Oversoul Courses and Mentorship for More in Black, and all of the beautiful reflections of the monad and consciousness around me. All right, so let's get started with the Ascension Process and Purpose. So the Ascension Process follows the succession of the Zodiac Cycle. And to give an example of um, a biblical scripture that also mentions the zodiac is in Proverbs 8, 27. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he set a circle upon the face of the deep. And another example is in the book of Ezekiel. He had a vision of a will in the middle of a will. The likeness of four living creatures came out of the mist of a whirlwind that circled out of the sky and their, fake, their faces were likened to a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. And those are in reference to the, the four divisions of the zodiac, which is man, Aquarius, lion, Leo, ox, Taurus, and eagle, which is Scorpio. And eagle is actually the third totem on the the Scorpius Zodiac. And um, yeah, so that's a really good example of um, the Zodiac being present even in biblical scriptures. So we are currently experiencing the culmination of the sun traveling through all 12 signs. 
and we are completing a cycle of a total of roughly 25,860 Earth years, and we are presently in Earth's active ascension cycle, which is really exciting. This is actually a picture of the Mayan zodiac will. And uh, according to Mayans, 2012 was the end of the world. And the actual prediction is like 2021, which I think it means like the end of the old world and the beginning of a new world in my interpretation. So I don't know if any if you guys did know this, but did you, like, did you know that the Zodiac is an ancient tool of creation? This is actually a picture of the Grand Junction of Jupiter and Saturn as well, which is really significant to seeding Christ consciousness. And we're entering the age of Aquarius, which is really exciting. This is supposed to be the golden age of consciousness and enlightenment on Earth, and actually the end of the Kali Yuga cycle, which is a really dark period where all of humanity is dealing with their shadows and uh, darker aspects that need refinement. And more onto the ascension per, uh, process and purpose. Uh, purpose is the refinement of consciousness and self mastery up the levels. And uh, this is a picture of the energy matrix with the 15 dimensional time matrix with the five harmonic universes shown here with the circles around the dimensional planes. So you have five harmonic universes. And in those five harmonic universes, you have five identities, each incarnated within the, that dimensional space. So we have us here at the incarnate identity. And then in the second harmonic universe of dimensions four through six, we have the soul identity through dimensions seven through nine. We have the oversoul identity, dimensions 10 through 12, which is the avatar identity. And this is actually the Christ consciousness space. And then dimension 13 through dimension 15 is the Rishi identity. And that's like um, your son. That's like the original abiding consciousness that's projecting down through these layers to be an incarnated human being and experience life. And so um, with this, it's to take responsibility for being a qualifying individual sphere of energy domain. And what I mean by that is literally this picture right here is your energy domain and you have your chakras within and outside of the body that correlate to the dimensional spaces around you and actually communicate into these spaces that creates the reality that you experience based off of the emotions, thoughts, and past experiences that you've been experiencing in your life. And what it means with taking responsibility is this awareness is empowering in the fact that if you don't take control of your own hologram, somebody else is gonna control it for you. And with the Ascension process, if you're taking taking responsibility for your own individual sphere of energy domain and you're doing the, the correct steps to to raise your energy up the physical body, then that that is transcending the, the layers of consciousness and integrating your your ability to be aware on multiple states of being. So the human energy field. The energy field of a human being is created on a quantum level to allow for the ascension, the ascension process. Um, we did not descend and incarnate as life forms to stay at this density. We have been given the ability to transcend our lower levels of consciousness and to reach evolutionary wisdom. And this is the technology we've been given in order to do that. In the evolution of consciousness, choice is key as you have free will. This means that you have the ability to choose what you're doing in your life. So if you want to stay in your sufferings, if you want to stay in an incarnation cycle, um, if you want to be subjected to tyrannical governments and, and things outside of your power, you're more than welcome to do that. But you also have the opposite choice to take up your divine inheritance and live in your highest potential self. So then we're going to talk about the life principle. And this is going to be the awareness of self. Before we have movement or sound, there's only the potentiality of involvement for awareness, which is a single point of consciousness. And this is 
This is where consciousness becomes aware of itself. And this is what we call the life principle and the fact that this consciousness is residing in every person, place, thing, timeline, and existence. And so there was a desire to experience itself. And so when this happened, consciousness went on a mission to create itself and experience itself. So desire is a patriarchal principle as desire fuels creation. Imagination is the beginning of creation. You imagine what you desire, you will what you imagine, and at last you create what you will. And then you have a commitment to expansion. Uh, creational energies polarize, creating two aspects of duality, which is consciousness, which can be said as a masculine and masculine charge, and then there's energy, which can be said to be a feminine charge, which is um, on its base level, a positive and a negative charge. So the fundamental basis for all of creation is based off of the fact that reality is a dual, which creates a magnetic compulsion that's able to create planes of space, which would be a dimension for which consciousness can reside within and experience itself. And then we have um, the ability to manifest as life entities. And this happens first um, through thought projection, which is the first plane of matter, which is mental matter. And um, this is, a, so this is like our life principle is able to manifest as life entities through the soul, which is an energy domain. Um, so you have these two aspects working together, which is consciousness and energy. Um, consciousness being needing something to reside within and energy providing that space for energy to reside within. And then you have a descent or projection into the lower planes of density. Um, this physical existence is to experience self-reflection and expansion of self and creation. So self-reflection is the school of wisdom. So the, the purpose of the descension of consciousness into the lower planes was so that it could experience itself and to expand on itself and to, to breathe and to feel and to have connection and to have these things that make itself real. Um, I hope that makes sense to you guys. And then we go into Christ as a perfect prototype of the life principle. Christ as the life principle is a complete commitment to matter life, which can be likened to the cross. Um, it is a descent into dense matter plane. Here, spirit is completely submerged into its physical experience and bound to its senses. And then there's also the divine expression of compassion, um, which Christ held within himself, which would be to suffer with or desire and to uplift or hope to help. And um, this is the attribute of, of Christ that was able to, to perform miracles and to, to be present with us in our suffering because he held that compassion in his heart to do so. So with the sacrifice of a higher existence, this Christos light comes from such a higher dimensional space and his commitment to the creation below him allows him to descend into this life to show us our highest potential in living form. Um, so the life principle is bound to matter, which is also another reference to the cross, um, completely subjected to the experience of amoral energies and the elements and all of these factors that create our life. And then you also, the Christ also had knowledge of universal law and that was why he had the ability to do what uh, he was able to do pre presently is because he did have the knowledge of these universal laws, which is present to all of us. Also had a direct connection to God. So in the ordinary individual, the tube of the Shashuma is closed, but the yogi it is open so that there is a direct connection between the sacral plexus at the base of the spine and pineal gland in the head. Kundalini remains coiled until she rises through Shashuma into the brain where she awakens the activity of the third eye pineal gland. This third eye is the link connection, connecting humans with the spiritual world or to be more correct with the higher spiritual nature of themselves. 
When Kundalini reaches this point, divine consciousness is attained. We have full awareness of manifestation and healing abilities. And then also, this is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, actually, is Jesus said we would do even greater work than he did, which means that he's present with all of us, and we all have these abilities to be fully aware of our manifestation and healing abilities. And he said that. So ascension is achieving what some would call godhood, which is what Yeshua Christ was able to obtain in his past life cycle present on earth. Then you have a connection with all in complete harmony, where there's no illusionary separation and you are completely aware of the interconnectivity of all of life in all dimensions and in all time. And you also have complete control over your matrix and what you experience. And you are endowed with creator abilities. The I am presence is what created this entire spectrum of life and that creator exists within you as well. And then you'll hear you'll have the learn and master self, which is the ability to self-reflect and to refine um, maybe the parts of our subconscious mind that rule over our life that sometimes make air experience more difficult or more trying. So whenever we're able to bring these aspects of ourself to light and to work with them and to master that self, you're gonna be moved brought into a higher awareness and full potentiality of your existence. And then here you have um, to connect your individual sphere of energy consciousness to the divine blueprint of creation, which is the Christos. Um, Ka, Ra, Ya, Sata, Ha, La are the seven tones of creation that make up the Christ Hala body, which is all colors of the rainbow merged into one frequency called the diamond light, which is the diamond soul, which was which Christ, the Christ was able to achieve in his current life here, his last current life here. Um, so this is just a, a small introduction um, on the Christ consciousness blueprint. It's actually not the Christ consciousness blueprint. Um, I've decided to break this up into a three-part series. So in the next webinar, I will go over the, the actual blueprint and the formula that's creating this life form that's able to govern over itself and to help refine the lower realms. And, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool uh, little journey we've been on here. Uh, I'm definitely open if anyone has any questions or comments. And um, if not, we're going to go into doing a Christ consciousness activation. Hey, Lex, I have a question. Yes. What? Where was that verse out of Ezekiel? Where is it? Um, Ezekiel what? I don't know which I don't know which one it is, but I will find out for you and let you know. Thank it you. just said yeah, it's definitely in Ezekiel. It's like the book of Ezekiel. I don't know which verse it is, but I'll find out for you. Thank you. Yeah. I do want to um invite Warren to come on and help me with this Christ consciousness activation. Oh, we've got 12 people here too. I seen that. I love it. So divine. So divine. Now that code is a bit stretched, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Do I need to fix it? Yeah, just fix it up. Yeah. All right. Just give me about 30 seconds. I just got to grab something. Okay. Lex, can I ask another question? Can you go back to that slide with the, um, with the, um, the auras where it has like, it has like all of it. The one before the second one, there's two, the first one. This Not one. that, the other one. This one. Yeah. This one. The, okay. the other one. The other one? Oh, the other one? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Sorry. So it's <laughs> a, I think there was a delay. There was a delay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yep, got you. Okay. Really now I love the screenshots. Oh. 
Okay, hi all. So 12 people, how cool hey. is this? I love it. Okay. Let's wait till we got the code up. There we are. Oh, you've got it now. Awesome. I just turn my camera off so it doesn't disrupt the, the um, activation. Okay. So just on the Christ consciousness, so what this code is, it's a Christ chakra, consciousness chakra, activated in the chamber of the heart. So as Lexi shared, there's like 12 there's obviously more chakras, but the 12th chakra is the Christ consciousness chakra. So it's wonderful. We've got the 12, 12, the 12th chakra and 12 people. So that's very synchronistic. It's the Ascension coding. So just really let this go into your third eye, but see it and feel it and just know that it's 36 inches just above the top of your head. That's where that code is coming from and is in. I can actually feel it strongly, Lexi, can you? Yeah. Yeah, so it's right in the 36 inches above your head, which is your 12th chakra. And just keep your eyes focused on the code and really let your mental energy go right between the center of your head. So between your two eyes, just right in that forehead region, just above the nose between your eyes. That's where your pineal gland is situated. Pythagoras literally went through 40 days of severe trials just to learn that one secret in a mystery school of how to activate his third eye. Oh, wow. That's how important this is. So just to take this and just really just focus that mental energy, like it's really, really, really just almost feel the currents moving between your eyes, just right into that center area. And don't be surprised if it even starts to feel a bit throbbing or hurt a bit or feel activated. And as you're doing that and just focusing on the center of a code, just become aware. Just like out of your peripheral vision of the 12th chakra and just how much it's pulsating right now as this code is activating and activating being dormant and quiet but now activated and fully alive and fully awakened and fully pulsing like filled with energy filled with light like a big egg shape almost right around in that 12th chakra And then just feel it go right down from that chakra through your crown chakra right down into your heart while still remaining multidimensionally within that 12th chakra but replicating it in your heart and then even going down further into your perineum and then feeling it goes through your feet and going right down through the center of the earth, down to the where the, fifth, the 13th chakra, the earth chakra is. And feel yourself fully in that massive, massive Adam Kadmon or light body, that Christ consciousness light body. And just noticing and feeling that white light pulsating central vertical channel as the light coming right from the heavens, right through your crown chakra, right through your whole body, right all the way through down into the center of the earth. Just feel it activating and clearing out all thought realms. And I'm just seeing like these little bits and old energies, just like sticks and just like wires and knots just being dissolved earth is a very desolate place a very dark place where many souls are lost 
And this place is activating all of our highest, highest vibrational frequencies to bring us back into that light body, that higher atom cadmon frequency light body that we came from, that we're meant to be in, that we're sent to Earth to do the work in, this physical body, but now reconnecting with our higher light body, the man from heaven, as is spoken about in 1 Corinthians 15. Just feel yourself connecting with that Adam Kadmon, that man from heaven body, that light body, which is where you came from. On earth to do this work. Just feel the power of the Most High resonating right through you. Going with your thoughts, to your mind. Filling you with white light in every part of your being. Some of you be seeing visions right now, feeling things and just feeling the awakening center of your heart come alive. It's like feeling back to who, to where you're meant to be back to those heavenly places. Some would even be seen the temple right now and standing in the temple, like on a marble floor. Temple of light. Where you first got your orders from to do the work on earth. It's the words I'm getting. What are you seeing, Lexi? Hmm. I feel anxious right now. <laughs> yeah, very. I'm feeling a, yeah, I'm just feeling it's like I'm, I'm, there's some stuff moving off of me. Yeah. There was something moved from my solar plexus chakra. Um, yeah, I'm standing in the temple. It's beautiful. Yeah, there's a lot of clearing happening right now. Yeah, I see. I'm seeing everybody in this temple just like activating the light body burning off things that are no longer serving them burning off things from lifetimes that have been just carrying carrying them with them each time and just yeah. chains being broken off no these are ugly realms and you know you're all sent to do the work here you know very ugly realms and all of, and it's very difficult not to get lost when you're in these realms of it of what's going on but you're here to be light bearers that's the message i'm being instructed to give yeah carry I'm here like, yeah new garments yeah new garments carry the light carry the flame move it forward to reach the people on this planet the lost souls that's what i'm hearing yeah really anchoring in christ consciousness yeah get them back anchored back within there light body back to where they're meant to be back into their divine genome yep divine blueprint Hmm. I can see and feel the ancient of days here right now. Yeah, that's how, that's what I thought too. That's what I thought I felt. It's just like ancient of days, like the old way that it used to be when yeah. your own matrix was not so affected by everyone else's matrix system and you had more of divine right and sovereignty present. Yes. And you were you would not come into contact with people who were not of your residence or not of your soul tribe or not of yeah. your people. Yeah.
we're like a lot more mixed up here. There's a lot of different there beings and, and yeah, our, our DNA has been mixed up and our, and our souls have been fragmented and there's just been so much that's happened that it's um, we're restoring the ancient of days. Yeah, we're reconnecting mm -hmm. with Adam Cadmon light body and drawing from it. Wow. To be, that's what I'm seeing, the ancient of days there, just in full light, yeah. shining. Yeah. Anyone else feel to um, in the chat what you're experiencing or anything you're seeing? I'm just seeing an ancient order of temple guardians, like being, being together, just basically sent forth to do the work. It's all I keep hearing seeing like an ancient order of temple guardians like a military order sent to get out and bring back the lost souls and rescue them that's what i'm seeing there's quite a lot of a lot of them here lost souls of tara yeah yeah, yeah. Army I, have of feeling, God. I have a feeling a few of the people on this webinar have come from that same order and some of you would feel that actually being you was you've always had this desire set to kind of you know rescue will get or basically help you know, deliver people from darkness. Quite a few of you. I'd imagine everyone here, yeah. Quite a few, yeah, definitely quite a few. Yeah. Kiyama saw mountains, yeah. Mountains, oh. Yeah, this energy feels so nice and clean, it's refreshing. Yeah, this code's amazing because I, I was given this code three months ago and I've never been given, felt to use it. And then today I was just told, yeah, use this one today. Yeah, it matches my PowerPoint and everything. I love it. Yeah. It's perfect. Madison, first I felt kind of a headache. Then I felt this tingle that went over my face, down my body to the ground, been weightless. I felt at peace and comfortable in my own skin for the first time in a long time. Uh -huh. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. Probably because you've reconnected with your light body, Madison, and you're kind of feeling back in that centered place from that ancient order where you've come from. Just got to realize everyone, you've been sent to do a work. Just everyone, just that, it's that simple. Just you've been sent to do a work. And it's like, um, whenever you're not doing that work to which you were sent, you'll always feel lost. You'll always feel miserable. You'll always feel desolate you'll always feel trapped in the energy of the lost souls which are on this planet but when you're back in your divine template your adam cadmon your higher christ consciousness blueprint then you're back doing the work to which you're sent and you're going to feel home there's a scripture in psalm 119 which says i've strayed like a lost sheep you know it says what's it again yeah i've strayed like a lost sheep um seek me out O lord for i've not forgotten your commands Wow. Yeah, it's an amazing. Yeah, you're totally right about the um, if you, if you're called to lead and you're not, you feel desolate, and lost, and hopeless. Yeah. I've experienced that before. A few people here were crying, and I said, "Yeah, well, I've certainly got tears in my eyes." I think even your dog's getting. Good. I think even Missy's is getting filled, Lexi. <laughs> Madison said, I didn't want to be here, but my spirit did for sure. Yeah, correct. It's a nice feeling, isn't it, when you reconnect with that divine presence? <laughs>
Well, I can see Alexia why I was meant to be here. I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't normally doing anything this time and I really felt to be here so and help you with this. So here we go. It's certainly um, awakening. What I'm seeing, it's like a calling back to the work. That's the words I keep seeing. And when I see in the ancient of days and seeing the higher beings, it's like calling people back to the work. And, so, and it's like, you'll never be truly happy and fulfilled unless you're doing the work to which you're sent when you're an indigo. Yeah. You know, come back to this realization over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Until you don't move. I'll turn my camera off too so everyone can just really receive this. Sorry if you guys heard my dog barking. I thought I had it muted. <clears throat> yeah, weightless sounds powerful too. I feel this really warm energy around me. It's like comforting me. I feel like it's starting to settle down more. And what do you think? Yeah. I feel like it's very present and like there to stay. It's like not going anywhere for anyone. No, I just feel like a big orb. I just feel like there's a huge big orb, which is just all surrounding. What started in the Christ conscious chakra in the 12, 36 inches extended down. And now it's become like a big egg, which is going right down 
threw my feet to the earth going right up into the heavens and or certainly going up into that 36 inches above and going even higher i don't know if anyone else is feeling that but yeah i feel like i'm in a warm egg <laughs> and you're in your life body exactly it yeah Okay, um, go ahead and move on. Does anyone have any questions or comments before we wrap up today? Keep hearing running water, it's interesting. Could be in like a cosmic stream of light, liquid light. That's what it makes me feel like. Welcome, Rebecca. And then, um, yeah, you're most welcome, guys. If any of you guys are interested in um, to working with me, working with me on a more personal level, or even just taking some sites, um, I'll put these links in the chat. We have a free discovery call to um, to find out how we can help you and what your healing process looks like and a membership site with free and paid courses. And I do want to mention there's a really cool course on membership card, on the ship, membership site called um, The Truth About Jesus. And it's a really awesome course. Yeah, it's interesting. That course, which I did about two years ago, I just did a webinar this week to a group of business owners and I had I had ones telling me about that Christ course. They actually were saying to me, like, oh, I've just been watching your Jesus course and I'd forgotten about it. And I was like, what course is that? And you're like, the truth about Jesus. I'm like, oh, I said, did you find it? And I'm like, yeah, we found it online. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I really enjoyed it. It made me realize um, how much of a badass Jesus was. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, exactly. That's why I think it blew people's mind because I, I know my marketing lesson for that course. I, when I did it, I, I sent out an email and I said, did you know that Jesus turned water into wine for a big party? It was and, um, That he used to insult church leaders and deliberately call them idiots to upset them and challenge their philosophy. But he, he <laughs> showed people how to obey tax using spiritual law. To, uh, he used to walk on water. Uh, he used to call his disciples numb nuts and give them shit whenever they were ignorant. Um, I wrote, and then what else was it? Oh, yeah, he basically stood up to the whole Roman government of his day and told them they had no power over him, only what he had given to them. I said, that takes some balls. So, yeah, he was a, you know, and he yeah. used, many would do miracles and all that kind of stuff and walk on water. And then I said the men, and did you know that he walked through a wall and ate a piece of fish in his light body, you know? So <laughs> I, think, yeah. I, think was, I think Yeshua was a shit stirrer in his own way. I agree. I um, I really enjoy. I really enjoyed it. Which is and why then I, I just... Oh, go ahead. So I was like, that's why I relate to Yeshua, because as you know, Lexi, I'm a horrendous shit stirrer. <laughs> you gotta be. Well, there's so much shit to stir. <laughs> yeah, well right? I just I just think most people are stupid, so I treat them that way. So it's always good when you're around <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thank you all so much for um for showing up for yourselves and for showing up for the collective on this. Um, I'm gonna, this is a three part series. So next week I'm gonna continue on with the universal formula and the blueprint of Christ consciousness, going a little deeper into how all of this happens and what makes it happen. Yeah. Awesome. So, that was great, Lexi. Thanks, thanks for that, that was great. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. Um, I'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Thanks, Lexi. Bye. Bye.